This is the beautiful Lakes District, one of New Zealand's tourist hotspots for travellers from all around the world and one of the most beautiful wonderlands to play in throughout New Zealand. Known for its geothermal activity and magnificent hot pools, snowboarding and skiing during New Zealand's winter and many more iconic tourism activities. It's fitting that Australasian motorsport enthusiast Tony Quinn has added New Zealand's only FIA Grade 2 circuit to a stable alongside Hampton Downs and Highlands Motorsport Park. Taupo has seen some amazing motorsport events over the years, A1GP and D1NZ since its inception in 2003. And D1 returns after several years. So the future is bright for Taupo International Motorsport Park as we get ready for the opening round of the Valvoline D1NZ National Drifting Championship. Proudly brought to you by Repco. The D1NZ competition format sees three judging officials take the helm in race control, overlooking the three major scoring criteria, line, angle and style. Together they form a score out of 100. Line is a predetermined racing line the drivers need to navigate. This is marked out by scoring areas called clipping points. Drivers need to hit these scoring zones to score a maximum of 35 points for each pass. Angle is how much rear slip angle a car produces. Each driver has 35 points available for maintaining as much angle as possible throughout the drift course. Style is a combination of throttle control, handbrake application, car speed and the overall fluidity of each run, with 30 points up for grabs. Teams have two laps in qualifying to start the competition. The driver with the best score takes pole position, with the top 8 drivers securing a spot in the top 16. From here the competition moves into the battle phase, forming a seated battle tree, battling through the top 16, the top 8, the top 4 and through to the finals. The battle phase of the competition sees each driver scored on a lead and chase run. The lead driver's objective is to set or better their performance in qualifying, while the chase driver's objective is to get as close as possible to the leading car, using it as a mobile clipping point. The chase driver needs to emulate or better the lead car's run while also maintaining the original scoring criteria. The three judging officials will then decide the winner by a majority decision. If it's a draw, they'll call an OMT, where the cars will battle one more time for sudden death. Drivers also need to be mindful of penalties while competing out on the track. Points deductions are handed out for one or two wheels off track, spinning out, straight lining the course or making contact with the walls or the other car. One thing's for certain though, rubbing is racing. Each driver has one competition timeout available to use during the battle phase of the competition. This can only be used once and gives teams a chance at servicing their car in pit lane. And that is how it's done for the Valvoline D1NZ Drifting Championship Series. One of the most crucial factors of drifting, the judges, who are respected and engaged with the current drivers. Now, it's not an easy task, and stepping up to the plate are these fine men. Mark O'Hara, out of Christchurch. He's been drifting for 14 years and returning for his third year with D1NZ. Mark is the line judge. He's got 35 points out of 100 up for grabs. Two-time Drift South champion Joel Counter, and another Christchurch driver with eight years under the belt and a former pro driver in D1NZ, also has 35 points to dish out, but his role, angle. The newcomer to 2022 is none other than the iconic New Zealand drifting veteran Stephen Soule. 15 years of D1NZ pro driving, he's also ventured to the birthplace of drifting, Japan's Ibisu circuit, where he placed third overall in the G1 GP championship. Stephen has 30 points for style. Very fitting for one of the most flamboyant D1NZ drivers to date. And here we are for the first time Day two here, round two, Taupo Motorsport Park. First time we're running the track in the correct position. So we start out of the Valvoline start box. We head to the first left-hander. The boys need to transfer the car to the outside Valvoline clipping point. Therefore, then they'll roll on the throttle really smoothly, trying to push the car out to this outside clipping zone. Now they will extend the car further to this outer ripple zone just to the right-hand side before they transition into the next left-hand side outer clipping zone. Now this is the first desail zone. This is where the guys can get off throttle before they roll back on the throttle to push back up the hill to the Repco area on the outer zone. They will then be keeping 
that whole area full throttle before they transition over a blind crest into the Valvoline finish line. It is an electric run here and it's going to be action packed. As we look at the championship points, Adam Davies sits on the top spot in the second position though. Banger Dan Woolhouse with 94, third place. Taylor James, great drive by him, but how about Jace Brown in fourth? Awesome, doing well with 72 points. Fifth place, Sean Potros stepping up into pro, 58 points. And then Dave Steadman, Michael Thorley, James McManaway round out the top eight. And here we go. This is what we're going to see today. Sean Potros, number one qualifier, 94.5 going up against Kurt Blackie. David Hunter, Ben Jenkins, that's going to be a great battle. Dave Steadman versus Troy Jenkins. And Adam Davies versus Jace Brown, the bottom four. Taylor James versus Jesse Greenside. That's going to be an awesome RBL battle. Then we've got Jordan Joyce versus Ben Jenkins. Another great battle. One of the newcomers coming through. Banger Dan Woolhouse versus James McManaway. That is going to be awesome and action packed. Then we've got Cody Pullenbury versus Michael Thorley, and that wraps up your top 16 drivers. It goes down to Launchmaster Willie. He gets ready to send them. They're side by side, the first battle of the top 16. Total International Motorsport Park. We are go. Here we go, Steve. Wow, and look at that, Sean Potros throwing huge angle, little bit of contact Bang. there by Kurt Blackie, nothing too major. Sean rotating his car massively into the first section as they switch back through into this midsection, pushing up the hill. Look at Kurt Blackie popping through the smoke there, running a little bit wide, getting lost in the smoke there, see a bit of a dirt trail, and look at that. Sean Potros fitting off the section really wow. nicely through that part. But, but showing why he's the number one qualifier with a 94.5. He just backs it up with a drive like that, including having contact with the chase driver. Is it going to be Sean Potros, the WTT machine, or the Sonta GT86? A quick start for Kurt Blackie as they race down the front straight here at Topo. And here we go, Kurt throwing it in nicely. A little bit of a bobble there on the handbrake. Sean giving himself room. He knows he's got a big advantage. Really smart driving here from the young youngster coming through here. But look at Kurt doing what he needed to. Nice wide line, running, getting out to that outside zone. Sean missing that zone fully. Trying to play catch up now. Getting out to that outside zone. Kurt doing a little bit of a dirt drop. Running into that outer zone there, tucking the nose oh, through there, uh, but very nice job right, there by right. Kurt Blackie. Oh, I thought we'd seen an over rotation by the uh, chase driver, which is Sean Potros. That was outside the circuit, the circuit had already finished there, so here we go. Sean Potros, Kurt, Kurt Blackie. Oh, we've got one that says Sean Potros, two that says Sean Potros. That's going to be enough. Potros goes through this top eight. Now. Well, he's going to go up against the Carters, North Shore Toyota Parts. GT86, Ben Jenkins behind the wheel as they accelerate down the front straight. Yeah, here we go. David Hunter throwing it in nicely in that Laurel. See the arse end of the car really sitting down, getting the drive that he needs to to accelerate into this next outer zone. Grabbing the handbrake there, holding the car up. A little bit of a correction through there, a lot of angle. Ben doing well, and it's actually opened the door up for Ben to really close the door here in this mid part of the section. Ben running a little bit wide there, getting lost in the smoke, but doing very well to hold that there, Steve. Out on the track, it is a big smoky track, and uh, this is going to be a good change up now here with Ben leading. Let's see what he can do. Well, they go straight down the front straight here in Toport. It's round two of the Valvoline D1NZ. Top 16 time. Yeah, Ben throwing it in nicely, grabbing a little bit of handbrake, and look at that, David Hunter right up on the inside. Nearly stalled himself out a little bit there. Ben getting nice and wide, rotating the car to that outer zone, opening the door up for David Hunter to try and come up on the inside. A little bit shallow on that outer clip there, but pulling away up in this midsection. David not getting out to that outer zone, but trying to close the door to get to this inner clip here. Few mistakes there by both drivers, but a pretty clean run there by Ben Jenkins. Well, let's go straight now to the results. It's David Hunter versus Ben Jenkins, top 16. One strike to Ben Jenkins, two strikes, three strikes. Ben Jenkins going through to the next round.
Well, it goes down to launch master Willie. Three, two, one. They're released, smashing through the gears. First, second, third. Off we go. It's the Napa Auto Pass Mimico R30, RB32 S14 that powers out to start. And look at that. Throws it in nicely there from Dave Stedman. Look at Troy Jenkins. Right up on the inside there, doing what he needs to, transitioning, tucking up on the inside. Little bit of contact there by Troy, getting a little bit close there, pushing Dave off into that area. Now this will be a different one for the judges. It is a decel zone. He had contact in there. He's allowed to slow down, but it then rolls back to the chase car not to make contact. Oh, there's work to do for the judges. You can see they're going, uh, what do we do? Go back to the rule book. The temperature is starting to drop here in Topor. They were getting as much temperature in their front tyres as they could coming up into this staging position, Kyle. Yeah, for sure. Steve, like, as they send it off here with uh, Launchmaster Willie, it's an awesome way. The boys want as much grip as they can coming into this section. You'll watch Troy here. Grab the handbrake, rotate the car to angle, and look at that. Dave trying to tuck right up on the pocket. Look at the angle that you can see of that front wheel rolling through there. Look at Troy, just drops a wheel out there, doing really nicely still. Grabbing the handbrake, trying to push the car out nice and wide to that outer clip. Dave doing what he needs to, tucking into the pocket here. You know he's got an advantage coming through to this section, but Troy doing uh -oh. a really nice run, and Dave dropping. Did he just drop two wheels wow, over that's the big. inner section? This, wow, look at that, Steve. Because that's blind. What we're seeing on the camera is not the same as what those drivers are seeing coming towards them. All right, let's go down to the judges' decision. Mark O'Hara, Joel Counter, Stephen Soul. There goes one. Joel Counter says Dave Stephen. It came down to Stephen Soul. We're going Sol. one oh, more time, time Steve. Steve. Woo. Oh, yes, the, the temperature has dropped massively, so already the grip levels would have changed a lot. And realistically, the most that they want to be grabbing is the front grip here. But here we go here, Steve. One, two, three. Launchmaster sends it. The boys are off. Next battle here, top 16, Adam Davies versus Jace Brown. Throwing it in here. Obviously not too much grip loss there, but Jace Brown doing what he needed to. Trying to get up there. A wee mistake there. Adam Davies throwing it out there. It looks stimpy. Look at this. No smoke coming off these tyres. There's obviously a bit of grease coming up the track there from the rain. The guys are doing really well to try and control these cars, especially not done a run at all. We can see here it's really now starting to grip up with Jace Brown throwing a bit of... Uh, Oh, a bit he, of smoke and wow. kept it on. <laughs> Just, this, now, this is, is a on. turning point for the day, the turning point for the weekend. You've got to think now, it's greasy out there. The guys have gone from wet, dry, cars having a lot of grip to cars having no grip. So well, here we go, this is the second run. A lot more conservative. Look at the understeer massively. Contact. Huge contact there. Oh. Now, this, is, this becomes so hard in there. Look at the massive understeer that Jace Brown had coming into this first section. This is a mix-up with the New Zealand weather here. Throwing down Good the old, rain. Good old Tero is four seasons in one day. It was warm and hot at the start. Now it's starting to rain and it's not overly warm at all. We go down and it's a uh, tough, it's here a we tough go. Here's the decision. Boys. Mark O'Hara, Joel Counter and Stephen So One says OMT, OMT, OMT. We're going again. This will be a good battle by these two guys. Well, it's Very high horsepowered RB motors. Well, it's One RB and S15. Versus, yeah, RB versus RB, S15 versus S14. One of them's a Zoo Performance, Zach Nova Tires, Roundwood, New Zealand, the Tokorawa kid. It is Taylor James. He's going up against the NZ Girls RB32 Stroker, the S15 of Jesse Greenslade. That's dead right here, Steve. Look at that. So Taylor, a bit more conservative as he throws it up on the inside here. Jesse needing to leave a little bit of a gap. Now that car of his is a rocket ship as they power up through this midsection through here. Jesse doing what he needs to, just sitting back in that pocket that Taylor James is leaving for him. He drives back through the smoke, doing what he needs to. Taylor doing a nice lead run, opening the door for Jesse to suck up on the inside. But what a good clean run by both drivers Both drivers. Here. Well, Taylor James, he's going to have to go up and swap positions now. Jesse Greenslade in the NZ Girl is 15th turn to play lead. Off they go down the front straight here at Topol. Round one, top 16. Round two, Valvoli D1NZ. Now, a nice transition into this first corner. As we know, it's a little bit greasier for the guys here, but Taylor tucking up on the pocket here. Jesse running a nice wide line, powering out to that outer zone. Bit of a bobble there by Taylor James. Jesse just needing to keep calm all through the six and getting into that outer zone. Look at Taylor diving up on the inside through there. 
Just grabbing the handbrake through that outer zone, tucking the nose in there. A little bit of a messy chase there by Taylor James. I think he might have been put off by the lack of speed that yeah. Jesse might have had. Let's go to the judges. What have they got to say? Who is it going to be? Mark O'Hara, Joel Counter, Stephen Soule. One says Taylor James. Joel Counter says OMT. Stephen Soule. Taylor James goes through, mate. All right, here we go. Back to it we go. It's top 16 action here. Round number two of the Valvoline D1 NZ. Dave Stedman going up against Troy Jenkins. Team DSR versus Team Jenkins. Off we go into the into the sweeper for the first time. Yeah, see Dave rotate into a lot of angle there. Now this is a one more time. Once again, they haven't really driven on the track. We can see it's now started to grip up a bit more through the centre section. Dave grabbing the handbrake, trying to push a bit wider to get up to that uphill outer zone clip. Coming through there. Troy doing a nice job, sitting in behind, driving just back there, diving back up on the inside. Dave tucking back up onto that inner clip there. Man, they're doing really well out here for such a new track, these guys. They're starting to adapt really well, and it's real good to see as the, the track has dried out for this next run of Troy versus Dave Steedman. Well, down the front straight we go, smashing gears into the Century Battery Sweeper for the first time. Yeah, Troy leading out here, doing a nice clean entry, getting on throttle early. Look at the gap he's pulled here on Dave Steedman, dropping a wheel again a little bit as he pushes wide, grabbing the handbrake as he's allowed to. Look at him pulling away here from Dave, Dave Steedman through the se centre section, pushing wide. Troy doing very well through this part here, grabbing the handbrake, trying to tuck the nose in. Dave getting right up on the inside there, but a real good lead run there by Troy Jenkins. So uh, we've got a uh, we've got a decision here. One, two, three. Troy Jenkins going through to the top eight. Well, of course, from one member of the team DSR to the other, here's the Napa Auto Parts Mimico 180 Rotary Power Plant. It's Rotary versus V8 in the Vitua Tires 07 Frankenstein. What is that? That's a Rocket Money Boss Kit or something with an S13? Yeah, that's the one. Launch Master Willie sending them off. And him rotating into angle, getting on throttle nice and early, looking at him, pulling a little bit of a gap there on Jace Brown. See how Jace now has pulled the wing off. Doesn't want to cause that understeer. There you go. Huge transition to the car. And him hard on throttle as he drives up through the center section. And look at Jace popping through that little puff of smoke there, transitioning nicely, getting to that outer zone as he needs to, and popping over that blind. What a great battle. It was. Like just a solid battle between two great drivers. Jace Brown and the Vitua Tires, S13. They're going out to battle. Down the front straight we go. Here we go, Jace. But see, look, there's so much more than two going in there. Grabbing the handbrake again and on. That's not good. Huge upset there for Adam Davies. But wait, he's got to hold on to that one there. He cannot stuff up his drift. That is correct. Jace Brown just needs to run this line out. Hopefully no one is talking to him. Wow, rotates to angle quite massively through there. Does he hold it? He comes back over the last part of the section. Jace Brown might have oh. just mixed things up as the championship leader may have just had a big bobble coming into that first section. Let's head to the result now. The judge's decision. What does Mark O'Hara, Joel Counter, Stephen Soul say? One, two, three, unanimous. Jace Brown goes through. Yeah, here we go. We've got Jordan Joyce waiting in the mist here for uh, his battle against Ben Wilkinson in the Casper Transmissions GT86. Now this is a uh, pro sport up and comer, Jordan Joyce versus Ben Wilkinson. He's been in the game a little while, had a couple of years off and uh, now stepping back in the seat. And as they send them off by Launchmaster Willie into the first section here, Jordan Joyce will throw it in nicely. A bit more tentative as he throws it into there, not rotating to angle massively. Now look at Ben Wilkinson smoking the tyres up as he's trying to get as much drive as he can to try and catch up oh, to shallow. Jordan Joyce in that next section. Yeah, diving up on the inside. Now Jordan doing what he needs to, sitting out nice and wide, opening the door for Ben to try and tuck up on the inside. Coming up over that crest, that is a Woo. very, very good run there by Jordan Joyce. He'll be happy after that first oh. uh, battle for him. Um, really cool to see both these drivers. There's a lot of action that has happened so far in this top 16 set of battles before we come into the top eight. Bang, Ben rotating massively into the first corner, throwing that Casper Transmissions GD86 into it. 
Jordan Joyce now trying to play catch up again. Rotates early, doesn't get to that outer zone, does exactly what Ben does. Ben not pushing quite as wide as he needs to. Jordan now right in the smoke zone, not getting out to where he needs to on that outer zone. And now he transitions really he's early. He's still on it, he's still on it. He grabs he got the around. handbrake, grab the handbrake to try wow. and lengthen that drift there. But there's going to be a big deduction. You can well, it's so cool to see. Well, here we go. We've got a judge's decision here on this. One, two, three, Jordan Joyce. Yesterday, it was Jace Brown that wore a whole lot of that door. That mark right there, that was on Jace Brown's car. He told me today, I don't care, I'm going to leave my marks on every pro driver this season. Don't do it to bang it. All right, here we go, Cole. As they come up for the first section of the car, uh, of the section, James way up on the inside, missing the clip, trying to keep that proximity on Banger. Holding the line, but look at that, Banger holding the line. James just oh, cooked himself. Now he got up too close, not doing the line that he needed to. Shut the door on himself, now getting up too close again. Really muddled oh, his oh, line oh, up and please. taking Banger out uh, of that drift now. These okay. are the things that James really needs to take in. You can get on the door of some cars, but there's a time and a place for that. What he's just done there is really thrown away his whole chase run on that car, on that battle just then. Okay. Let's um, give it a thumbs up. Yeah, you know, Fanger's happy out there. Obviously, nothing too crazy. Now he's going to put a chase on on James McManaway. Huge advantage to Fanger. You know, 10-0 realistically. Now, it needs to not be an inactive chase here. But James will no doubt be throwing down a huge lead run. And look at him pulling away on Fanger. Well, he's Fanger absolutely doesn't powering really through want the to circuit. And, and let him get away on him. And, and he really doesn't want to lose his line. But Fanger doing what he needs to, holding the line. But James is showing that he can drive here. He is throwing it with the big boys, but obviously just had a little bit of a contact and a few mistakes out there. But wow, that was good to see by James throwing it down in that. Wow, 100%. Oh, obviously <laughs> right here, the judges have got a <laughs> decision already. Smile. Look at that. Both yes. of those smiles. Good looking lads. And uh, amazingly, Fang it there gets the unanimous decision. All right. This is the Vertex NZ GT Radials 180 of driver number 180, Michael Thorley. Well, here we go, Steve. One, two, three. Launchmaster Willie sends the boys out there for the first run. Cody... Throwing it into the first section, grabbing the handbrake, rotating the car out there. Look at that, Michael Thorley trying to get up on the door there, holding the line there really nicely. Look, Cody going, rotating with a lot of angle. Michael switching uh -oh. way too early, having to dive up on the inside. Throwing a tyre over the inner clip there. Cody doing what he needs to. Look at the car. It's, it's looking very slow out there, but he's doing what he needs to, putting the car in the right yeah. position. Michael and that's Thorley. making it really hard for Michael. Well, Thorley looked like he was three-wheeling out there. He certainly looked like he was getting a lot of weight um, jacking over. As we get ready for the second half of this battle, Michael Thorley, his turn to lead. Yeah, Thorley grabs the handbrake, rotates the car to a lot of angle. He's really happy to pull away here from Cody. You can see he had a lot of grip. Running that real nice wide line there, Thorley is doing rotating, grabbing the handbrake, trying to push it out wide. He runs really shallow through that centre section there. You can see he pulls, pulls a massive gap on Cody through the section that's trying to run that wider line. And uh, as they finish up the section there, Steve, it was full on for both the boys. But uh, Thorley doing nice, clean run there. We've got the judges' score here. There we go, Cody pulling Burry. Potros is not one to uh, be in the fate handed. He's going to go 110%, so no doubt be full as well. This is going to be a good one, Steve. Well, let's send them loose straight into the first turn here at Topol Round 2, the D1NZ. Yeah, look, Sean doing a nice smooth entry, tucking up on the inside there. Now putting the foot down, getting out the out of zone. Doing nicely as he's popping back through the smoke. Running outside zone, grabbing the handbrake. Now, Sean not getting out to that outer zone. That's how he's pulled that gap. Now he's missed that next outer zone. Really We're having off. a few mistakes through this there. But obviously, Sean had a little bit of a mistake through the center section. Didn't get out as wide as he needed to through the Repco S's there. And, uh, you know, really shallowing up through the next section. So this is going to be a push up right here, Steve. 
Sean's going to be right on the door of Ben Jenkins coming into this first section. Look at him, tucking up on the inside. Ben needing to do what he needs to do. Keep a clear head. Put that throttle down of that 2J power. Throwing it into that outer zone, doing what he needs to. Look at Potros right on the door of Ben Jenkins as he comes through the centre section. Sean diving up on the door of Ben as he rotates to the outer section. Coming through oh, the centre no, section, a bit of a mistake it. through Sean Potros as he nearly rotates over the top of the hill. What a battle there, Steve. Wow, absolutely. Let's see what the judges have on this one for this battle. All right, let's have a look. So it goes down to the judges' decision. Will it be Sean Potros ben, or Ben Jenkins? And easy to see. One, two, three. Ben Jenkins takes the win. Ben beats Sean. Goes into the top four. Look who's going up now. Troy oh, and Chase. Oh, oh, oh. Left-hand side of the tree. If Troy Jenkins can do it, he's going to go up against his brother. But Chase Brown is going to be the... <laughs> he's going to be the man that drives this number. Oh, that's right here. We've got Jace Brown leading out Troy Jenkins. Doing a nice lead run, but look at Troy jumping up on the oh, pocket here. Wow. Not giving himself enough room, and off he goes. Handing okay. this lead battle through to has Jace to Brown. Has to hold on to the battle. Comes through, yeah. has to finish it, just settles it down. Sweet. We check that one off. Oh, uh -oh. Troy pushing hard. This is so good to see. Troy stepping it up, putting the car on the line. Giving it 110% and just then that just didn't quite pay off. That car had a lot more pace than uh, what he anticipated and, okay. it, and it caught him out. Here we go, we got Launchmaster Willie sending off the boys. The next part of Troy Jenkins and Jace Brown out there. Troy throws it into the first corner. Rotating the car to angle, getting the drive down. Now let's see if Troy pulls away on Jace Brown. He dropped the wheel again every time so far this weekend. He has dropped the wheel on that section. Look at this shot here from George as we see the drone footage. Troy getting the car right out to where he needs to. Jace having a bit of a bobble there. Big power skid coming up the midsection. Troy doing a beautiful lead run there. Hats off to him and Jace having a few mistakes in that chase run there. But wow, Steve, what wow. a good battle. But let's see what happens this time here. Which direction are they going to go? I also love how you've clearly been listening to that idiot commentator, Steve. That's me over the years, trying to persuade the judges to go in your, your way. Anyway, let's have a look here. Oh, there we go. Jace Brown, one, two, three, takes the win. He's moving into the top four. Yeah, this is going to be a good battle. These two boys have driven many a time before. Very identical cars, different power packages. One a Toyota, one an RB, but here we go. Taylor James sending it in. Look at the first quick rotation. Throws the car into the angle, gets back on the throttle. Really wide there, drops the wheel. Not what he wanted to do. Jordan, putting Jordan Joyce off straight away. There'll be a slight advantage now for Jordan Joyce trying to catch back up, gather his lineup. Taylor doing what he needs to, putting the car nice and wide. But I'm sure there will be a little advantage there to Jordan Joyce straight away being put off on the first part of that section. But Taylor gathering it back up, putting it up over the final part of the uh, Valvoline finish line. At what point does Jordan Joyce be able to see? He was stuck in the smoke the entire time. Taylor James versus Jordan Joyce. Here they go. One, two, three. Send them. Launchmaster Willie, Taylor, uh, Jordan Joyce throwing it a nice smooth entry into that outer zone. Taylor giving him a little bit of room, holding up there as Jordan tries to lay the throttle down, getting the drive out of that car to the next section. Look at Taylor right up on the inside, doing what he needs to, tucking up on that pocket. Jordan showing up nice and wide. Taylor getting a little bit caught in that smoke, but gathers it back up as they rotates massively into the final section oh, there. Oh, and that's a contact. big one. Wow, Ooh. very big contact through there. Taylor coming right up on the inside. Now Jordan rotated massively to angle, which would have slowed the car right down. And uh, having a little bit of a mistake on the end of that run there. Who's it going to be? But good one, driving also by two, George Joyce for three. the one. Taylor takes it, brother. As the sun starts to set here in Taupo, Banger Dan going to lead out over Cody Pullenbury. Now this is going to be a good battle between there. Launchmaster Willie sends them one, two, three. Here we go for our last, oh, last top four battle here. This is interesting. Banger throws it in hard into the first six. Cody nicely up on the inside. Banger, look at that, right out on that outer zone. Pulling the angle out, getting the drive he needs to. Running up to that outer zone. Now here we go, look at this shot here. 
Cody tucking up on the inside, nice diving switch. up onto Banger's door as he needs to to get into that pocket, transitions through this next section, diving up to tuck up over that Ooh, clip there. But in. A very good drive there by Fanger, opening the door up for Cody to come up to where, you know, come up to his door. Yeah, you're dead right. And that's a factory, just about Mustang motor that he's just bolted on a supercharger. But here we go, Steve. The last battle of the top eight here. Big Cody Pullenberry throwing it into the first corner with Fanger trying to dive up on the inside. Cody doing what he needs to, putting the car really wide out there. Fanger tucking up on the inside, getting in that little pocket. Cody not quite pushing out wide enough as he did need to. Fanger real uh -oh. wide out there and he's throwing it off. He's gone so wide there. Just Cody. Cody's finished the rest wow. of the run here and Fanger Dan has got lost in the smoke. Well, let's see. I think it's going to go in one direction, isn't it? There we go. One, two, three. Cody Pullenberry takes the win. He's into the top four. The monster, the V8, the supercharger. But he's going up against the Carter's tyres, North Shore Toyota Park, the 2JZ GT86. Can Benny Boy do it? Ben Jenkins, Jace Brown, we're about to find out. This is semi-final time for round two of the Valvoline D1NZ. Woo! While we wait here for Launchmaster Willie, one, two, three, he sends it out. Here we go. Ben Jenkins rockets it into the first section, throws it sideways. Now I'm predicting Ben's going to pull away heavily from Jace Brown through here. Now watch this as the card is tied at 86. Put the foot down and he throws a lot of angle into that. Huge understeer there by Ben. Has he thrown it away? Jace Brown coming into this next section. Still doing what he needs to, but a big bobble there by Ben Jenkins oh in the gosh. lead run. A massive understeer through the uh, <coughs> Repco S's there, Steve. Holy Toledo. Jace Brown, you got some work to do. Jamie is spotted. We'll be saying, look. Hold it together. It. Yeah, hold it together. We use your words. Same, same. That's the one now. Here we go with Jace Brown leading it out there. The lovely uh, Frankenstein is sitting. Now Ben Jenkins will drive, no doubt, a right up onto the door here of Jace Brown, trying to force an error. Jace just needed Renning to do, do what he needs to do. Throws a lot of angle in this midsection through here. Look at Ben, right up on the inside, transitioning right up through the centre section, right up on Jace's door. Bit of a bobble, tucking through the inside there, transitioning a bit early. But I think Jace Brown may have oh, just... Oh, wow. Is this too little too late? It. Is that enough for Jace Brown? Is Jace Brown going to go to, through to his first final? Let's find out what the judges have to say now. Here comes the judges' decision. Will it be Ben Jenkins? Is it going to be Jace Brown? There's one, there's two, there's three. It's unanimous. Jace Brown has gone through to the finals. Well, it is time for semi-final number two. On the screen right there is the Zoo Performance. Zach Nova ties Roundwood, New Zealand. RB34, S14, Taylor James, and he's going up against Mr. 2JCK Earthworks, the S15 of Cody Pullen Burry. Launchmaster Willie says three, two, one. We launch them into the first turn here. Let's go, Cole Armstrong, let's go! Taylor James, yes, look at him, throwing it really wide. Nearly drops another wheel on that outer zone there. Cody Pullenberry sitting right up on the inside. Dives back in again. Taylor doing what he needs. Look, putting the car so wide there. Look at Cody coming up through the smoke there, diving up on the inside. Look at this battle here from these two young fellas. Right up on the inside there. Cody Pullenberry pushing it hard behind Taylor James. What a good battle there. What We've a seen battle. Steve. Oh, that's how they, they, these boys have such an awesome engine management set up in here. And that controls the windscreen wipers, the indicators, the passenger line. But here we go, Steve. One, two, three. Launchmaster Willie sends him off. In car footage here with Taylor James chasing down Cody Pullenberry into this first section here. Now look at Cody throwing it in nicely here. Look at the smoke as he slowly pulls away here from Taylor James. Taylor transferring a little bit early there. Grabbing the handbrake, trying to hold the car out here nice and wide. A little bit of a correction there as he tucks up on the inside there of Cody Pullenberry. Cody getting nice and wide, opening the door there for Taylor James to come up through the centre section. And that's a oh. good battle there by and both this, of these look, look guys. At the smoke. This is exactly what the drivers see. They see nothing. It is just, it's driving by Braille. How tight it is. What is it going to be for these two drivers? Oh, one, one more time, says number one. Joel Counter says Taylor James. What does Stephen Soul say? Taylor James goes through to the final.
Well, this is the battle for third and fourth. So driving the Carter's Tires North Shore Toyota parts, 2JZ powered GT86, it is Ben Jenkins, of course, I've just mentioned it before. Cody Pullenbury, he's going up in the CK Earthworks 2JZ S15. It's Toyota versus Nissan. It's 2J versus 2J. It's the battle for third and fourth here at Topor International Motorsport Park. Launched by Launchmaster Willie. Down the front straight we go and into the Century Battery Sweeper. Off we go. Yeah, Cody Pullenbury throwing a big lot of angle into that first section. Sitting the car right out, just dropping a wheel there, transitioning a little bit hard, making it a bit hard there for Ben. Diving up on the inside. Now Cody having a little bit of a bobble, not getting out as wide as he needed to. Look at Ben, tucking up in that pocket like he wants to. Cody dropping another wheel on that lead run. Opening the door for Ben. What a Wow, what battle. a drive, what a drive. So here we go, Steve, for the final part of the third and fourth battle here. Well, the round two, the sun's going down, but there's certainly temperature out here on track. The second half of the battle for third and fourth. Who's going to take the last spot on the podium? There it is. Ben throwing it in tight there. Cody getting right up on the inside there. Maybe losing a little bit of momentum. Look at the gap there. Ben nearly dropping a wheel. Putting off Cody. Did he a little bit there? He rotated the angle out of the car, but he gets out to that outer zone as he needs to. Transitions out to, and gets out to that next zone. Cody having to really minimise some um, Bang, line one there, wheel off one wheel off again, but wow. did also Ben drop a wheel on that outer zone. Let's this go the is going bike. to be tricky. We got to roll back lead for lead. Now watch Ben come out of the section here. Has to dial. Look at that dials angle off, nearly oh. straight lines to a reinitiation. Cody sitting in there behind. Now he has to. He has a little bit of a bobble because Ben's a little bit off line. Transitions differently. Here we go again. Oh, no, that's not dirt. Look, tell it's just me, you a lot say of dirt bobble. on the what wheel. What is a bobble? So that's a bobble. So see where Ben came out yep. to that outer zone and had to dial angle out of the car. He needs to keep the wheels correct. Now, uh, smooth. Well, now, so let's watch this one here. We've look at the bobble. front wheel of Ben. Look how it starts to straighten up, straightens up, and a quick turns in and back into it. So what he does is he try and weight tramp, transfers the car yep. to get it back so to like, the opposite click, click. way he needs to. Yes. Okay, Small so your same bobble. Then. The thing that we've got to consider, playing devil's advocate, is that our judges are saying straight line, that they're saying all four wheels going in forward motion for more than a foot equals a straight line and a zero. What are they going to have here, Steve? That was a full-on action-packed. A uh... All right, Cody Pullenbury. Ben Jenkins. One, One two, two, three. three. Ben, ben Jenkins. Woo -hoo -hoo. Whoa. Here we go. Well, this man here, he's battled his way through the Zoo Performance. Zach Nova Tyres, Roundwood, New Zealand, the Tukaroa kid. He's pulling up into the park. He will be leading this time first, but he's going to be taking on the Vitua Tyres. 07 Frankenstein, his first ever final in the D1NZ Jace Brown. Woo -hoo -hoo. Woo! We get ready to set them loose. It'll go down to launch. Master Willie. Wow, I can't wait as we get ready to go. You can see in the driver's eyes, there's two more battles to go. It goes down to Willie. He says, are you ready? Are you ready? Three, two, one, forget the rest. You've got the best. Valvoli, D1 and Z, it's final time. Look at this. We've got that in-car footage here of Chase Brown chasing up on Taylor James, running that real wide line there, laying down that techno Nova smoke, running bang into that outer zone. Look at Chase Brown's pace as he comes up the centre section through here. Holy moly's right on the door, pushes himself a little bit wide there. Runs out of room, but Chase Brown getting right up on the door and a little bit of a mistake. Oh, that was a bobble. There was not a wheel off. It was a bobble. Woo! It was definitely a reinitiation, but that is what we come to see. Final time. Woo! Where did he pull that one from? They, they, they just pulled oh the my gosh. out of the car and just made it a rocket ship. He's been slow all weekend and decided he wanted to be fast against an RB34. Let's check out the Repro replay. This is the final. Taylor just doing what he needed to. Awesome entry here, throwing it really nice and wide right out on that outer zone clipping point that the judges want to see. Look at him, dialing off that zone, bang! Transitions right to that outer zone, opening the door for Jace Brown to come right up on its door. Boom, back to the other side, 
getting into that outer zone, transitions through the midsection there, and bam, up over that Valvoline finish line there. What a smooth run there by Taylor James. But here we go, Steve. We've got oh a my switch gosh. up. I tell you what, if they were poker players, they'd both be all in right now. Well, it's got the 187 on the door. Taylor James ready to do it again. Look how smooth, look how cool he looks. But he's got to go and chase down that Frankenstein monster. Let's see them do it again as we see the second half of the final. Yeah, here we go. Bam, Taylor throws it in a bit earlier than Jace Brown. Jace quite shallow up on the inside there. Now pushing out a bit wider. Throwing down that lead run. Now look at Jace throwing down the power. Getting out nice and wide. A little bit shallow through there. Messed up his line into that outer zone. Really shut the door on Taylor. Now Taylor doing what he needs to. He's gone up. Oh. Taylor James has gone up onto the grass. He's gone off. And that means we know who is going to taste this first ever victory in Whoa. the D1NZ. Jamie, his spotter, will be saying, Jace, you freaking well done it. Oh, he's lighting. Look, he's well off the section. He knows. Repco oh, replay. Oh, what happened? Watch this. So Taylor's right up on the inside. Jace doing what he needs to. Pushing the car wide here. Getting into this outer zone. Now he doesn't push deep into this next section. This is a desail zone. Runs real shallow. Puts Taylor right into the smoke screen. Taylor has no idea where he is on the track. Bang. Off wow. he goes right onto the grass. Now we need to watch out on this. Are the judges going to call? Jace caused this uh, misjudgment because he was way offline. Have they got a result? <laughs> what an awesome battle by both of those drivers. Oh. Taylor just got lost in the smoke there, but Jace Brown, his first ever final. And has he okay. done it, Steve? Let's go for the reaction. I want to know, who, who's done it? Jace Brown. Jace Brown gets the win. <laughs> This is unreal. So this is the highest we've made it um, to be on the podium, yeah, in our career for, for, pro, for, for pro. So I actually, we can't believe it. I mean, it does show we've put a little bit of research into the car, research and development, and tried to make it a little bit quicker. And um, just having a, a team that's uh, well, yeah, well oiled and, and working really, really well. And I can't thank our sponsors enough. Uh, the Royal Car Company, Vitar Tyres, STA Parts, Tyre Traders in Cambridge, all the little guys that make up everything to make it happen. Spray some champagne!